A Kiwi-made innovation is set to transform search and rescues at sea. Instead of relying solely on emergency beacons, the lightweight radar reflectors are foldable, they can be deployed in seconds, and they're powerful enough to be spotted from space. Joining me now is Dr David Galligan, Chief Scientist at the New Zealand Defence Force, and Dr Tom Dowling, University of Auckland Scientist. Good morning to both of you. And uh, it's not just you here this morning, we've also got uh, a wee visitor, uh, which is a practical demo of what yeah. we're talking about here. A radar reflector indeed, ready to make you seen from space. So, okay, so literally if we fire this thing up, we'll be seen from space, or maybe the roof could uh, get in the way? Outside the building. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. If we took the roof off the building, we'd absolutely see you from space uh, in a very bright and flashy way. Yeah. So what, what um, if I can ask you, uh, Tom, what, what sort of sparked this? So this really comes from marrying my two loves of the sea uh, and um, science and remote sensing. So I, I'm an Earth observation physical system scientist. Mm -hmm. So I, I work with satellites and drones. Um, and my last job was in the Royal Navy. Uh, so putting these two things together, I was like, okay, I want to save lives at sea. Fantastic. And what's the NZDF's uh, yeah. interest in all of this? So, so we have a science technology unit in NZDF that I run, and we're really keen on innovations across the board. Um, New Zealand Defence Force is a key part of the search and rescue mm -hmm. apparatus for the country, one of the biggest search and rescue zones in the world across the ocean. And we're looking at ways of being more efficient and effective uh, for those searches, where we often use um, very expensive planes, there's few of them, and ships. How can we do it more effectively and how can we save those lives uh, that may be lost around the Pacific Islands, for example, and, and really make a difference? Is this a cost solution, really? Um, it's part of an overall solution. Um, so ideally, people will have EPIRBs and other electronic devices. This provides a really good secondary uh, capability. It's completely passive. It doesn't require batteries or anything. And as anyone knows, in an emergency, the simplest things are often the best. Mm. Um, so people should definitely acquire those other devices. Some people can't afford to, though, as well. So this is a matter of doing the best we can for everyone. And for NZDF, those scarce assets that we've got, uh, we can really deploy them in the best way possible. You've, I mean, you've got it with us. We, yes. Do you want to give us a vague idea of how it works yeah, the best you can? Absolutely. I'll yeah. try not to take out the desk as I do it. <laughs> uh, so this, this is a full-size working model. Oh, that's great. It's like <laughs> a sort of Tetris. There you go. Model. There so, go. yeah, so this, this is my, my engineering colleague, Ella Fasciano. It's her genius at work here. Right. And what you have here is a selection of what's called corner reflectors. Mm. So it's three faces at 90 degrees to one another that reflect radar energy. Yeah. And what they do is they gather all the energy and then send it back to the receiver. Mm. Uh, so instead of it scattering away and it being like this kind of faint signal, mm. it picks it all up and sends it back. So this has a radar cross-section equivalent to 800 metres squared, mm. although if it was a flat metal sheet. So. That sounds really complicated, like some sort of physics and origami blend there. I don't know what's the... It is, that is, I'll just move that out of the way again. Apologies. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, it is, that is literally what it is. It's, uh, it's a combat we looked at origami and mathematical topology, combined it with some really cool fundamental physics, uh, and you end up with something like this. Fantastic. Yeah. So, and it's the folding that really helps you. Yes, exactly. So, you know, the design space here is ultra cheap, ultra lightweight, self deploying, but no, uh, no gas, no power. Um, yeah. and it, oh, so no battery required? No battery whatsoever. Um, it's the potential energy stored in the springs inside that pops it up. Um, yeah. yeah, which means that and that's, it looks really simple and it looks like it's been made at a Bunnings store, because <laughs> it is. Uh, you know, we're trying to choose low cost. Yeah. This is real sort of number eight wire innovation stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Where does the patent for all of this sort of sit? Where does the IP rest? Sure, so there's actually three registered designs and two patents associated with this, because there's a, a variety of different things. Mm. Um, and it sits with the university, um, and, uh, and we're actually looking to spin that out to make this a real thing. So this could be a commercial opportunity for them, and for you now, I understand. Yes, yeah, much to my <laughs> surprise, I'm now uh, the CEO of a spin out. <laughs> um, not quite sure how that happened to me. Um, and it wouldn't be possible without uh, defence science and technology. And, and I should point out, this is really what we're trying to do more of. Uh, we've got defence industry strategy. This is well aligned with that, actually supporting some of these really cool developments. I should also point out that's a prototype. So a lot of the work here has been very iterative. As was mentioned, you know, the Bunnings kind of example. Um, you've got core flute, you've got gaffer tape, you've got tin foil. Um, eventually, this will be commercialized into a more kind of permanent product. But the whole point here was cheap and cheerful, and it's staying relatively cheap, um, and ability to rapidly reiterate. So basically, fail fast, try a different thing again and again. As there's been a lot of sweat from people to actually get to a point of the, the best prototype. Great to see how it's looking anyway. Mm. Thanks for joining us uh, now today. Uh, Tom Dowling from the University of Auckland and Dr David Galligan, uh, Galligan Chief Scientist at the New Zealand Defence Force.